بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته math grade 8 we are in model 5 lesson 6 qualitative graphs the last lesson in this model today we want to learn qualitative graphs in this lesson we want to recognize a qualitative graph and interpret the scenario it represents as well as create a qualitative graph. The first idea in this lesson, analyze qualitative graphs. The graph shown is a qualitative graph. So a qualitative graph, graphs are, a qualitative graphs are, graphs used to represent situations that may not have a numerical value or graphs in which numerical values are not included. As you see here, we have x-axis represent the time using the second, and here we have y-axis represent the percent downloaded. As you see here, x-axis and y-axis means axes are labeled but don't include numerical values. As you see, no values here, no numbers, no numbers. And this is the graph. You can see the relationship between time and percent of photos downloaded. The rate of change of a qualitative graph can provide useful information between two values. As you see here, we have five cases. The first case here, as you see, we have x-axis, y-axis, and this is the graph. This is line, this is line. And this line, as you see, go up, means increasing, increasing at a constant rate. When you see straight line go up, the graph mean increasing at a constant rate. In the second case, we have line go down, line go down. So means decreasing, decreasing at a constant rate. As you see here, we have line parallel with X axis. So this is no change. This is no change. So here means we have fixed constant rate. In this case, as you see, we have curve. Curve go up, not straight line. Here you have curve. So it means increasing at a varied rate. We have change in the rate. In the last case here, we have curve go down. Means decreasing at a varied rate. Decreasing at a varied rate. Analyze quantitative graphs. The graph displays the water level in a bath tube. Describe the change in the water level over time. The graph demonstrates how water level changes as time increases. As you see here, we have x-axis represent the time. And here we have y-axis represent the water level. And as, as you see here, we have in this period here, we have increasing to this point. In this point, we have no change to this point. In this point, we have decreasing. So this is the meaning of the analyze qualitative graphs. As you see here, from the origin to this point, we have increasing. From this point to this point, we have no change. And from this point to this point, we have decreasing. So the water level increases at a constant rate for a period of time. There is no change in water level. Then the water level decreases at a constant rate. In this example, the graph represents revenue from a local clothing store describe the sales over time. As you see here, we have the time, 
here we have the skull, here we have the graph. The graph have many periods here, as you see. Overall, the cells increases steadily. As you see, the cells increases steadily. There are two periods of time where the cell decreases. As you see here, we have decreases. Or remain constant, as you see here, constant. The second idea in this lesson, sketch qualitative graphs. Sketch qualitative graphs. Qualitative graphs represent essential elements of a situation in a graphical form. You can sketch qualitative graphs to represent many real-world functions that are described variable. Charlie's speed over time. Charlie's Charlie is riding his bike. He speeds up, rides at a constant rate, then slows down. Sketch a qualitative graph to represent the scenario. So as you see here, we have uh, x-axis represent the time, y-axis represent the speed, and as you see, no numerical numbers, no numerical numbers. And uh, start, he starts from here, from this point. As you see, we have increasing in the speed to this point. Then we have here no change in the speed in this period to this point. Then we have decrease here to this point. Number of pencils sold over time. A score. Store cells pencils at the beginning at the beginning of the year. They sell a lot of pencils. Then cells drop, and finally pencils are sold at a steady rate. Sketch qualitative a graph to represent the scenario. As you see here, we have x-axis represent the time. Here we have y-axis represent the number of pencils sold. So as you see from the origin here from, the, from this point, we have increasing to this point. But the increasing here in change rate. Then we have decreasing in change rate. Then here we have no change. Here we have no change. Sketch qualitative graphs. A tennis ball is dropped on the floor. On each successive bonus, it rebounds to a height less than is a previous bonus height until it comes to rest on the floor. Sketch a quantitative graph to represent the situation. Determine if the graph is linear or nonlinear, and where the graph is increasing or decreasing. So the first step sketch a qualitative graph to represent the situation. Draw and label the axis. Label the vertical axis distance from floor and label the horizontal axis the time. So the first step, uh, draw x axis represent the time and draw y axis represent the distance from the floor. Then Sketch the shape of the graph. The distance from the floor starts out at a high value. Then falls to the the ball bounces and rebounds to a height less than its drop height. So this pattern is repeated several times until the ball comes to rest on the floor. As you see, the ball starts from here. Go to the ground, to, to the floor. As you see here, we have increase, uh, decreasing, but this is not linear and change rate. To this point, 
then go up. So it means we have decreasing and change it to this point, then decreasing to this point, increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing to the last point here in the floor. So determine if the graph is linear or nonlinear and where the graph is increasing or decreasing. In the rate of change in the graph constant, is the graph constant? No. As you see, we don't have straight line. We have like curve. So it means we don't have a constant here. We have change in the rate. So the graph is non-linear. The graph is non-linear. The graph is increasing. We never, the tensile ball travels up in the air. Always when we travel up from the floor to the air, we have increasing. Because the distance from the floor is increasing. The graph is decreasing whenever the tense all travels toward to ground. Then we have decrease the decreasing when the ball go back to the ground. Because the distance from the floor is decreasing. A person riding a bike slowly decreases. Their speed, then they quickly speed up finally. They, they maintain a constant speed for a period of time. So sketch a qualitative graph to represent the situation. We have here x axis represents the time, y axis represents the speed. And as you see, this is the graph from this point, the beginning point here to this point. As you see, we have decreasing in the same rate, in a constant rate. Then in this point to this point, we have increasing in constant rate. Then from this point to this point, no change, no change. So determine if the graph is linear or nonlinear and where the graph is increasing or decreasing. So as you see, not, li not linear, not linear. So the graph is nonlinear. The graph is increasing, increasing when the pike speed up in this period. Here we have increasing. Then the graph is decreasing when the bike slow down. As you see here, we have decreasing. And here, no change in this period, no change. So sketch qualitative graphs with values. Lewis is biking to his friend Nathan's house. He increases his speed at the constant rate of two minutes until he reaches a speed of six miles per hour. He then decreases his speed at a constant rate for a minute until he, reach, he reaches a speed of two miles per hour. Finally, his, spe his speed increases at a varied rate for three minutes until he reaches a speed of eight miles per hour. Sketch a graph that accurately represent Lewis trip. Draw and label the axis, label the vertical axis, speed meter per hours, label the horizontal axis time using the minute. Use the information in the problem to sketch the shape of the graph. And as you see, from this point to this point, we have increase in a constant rate. Then from this point to this point, we have decrease in a constant rate. And from this point to this point, we have increase 
and change it. Julian is riding his horse. The horse's speed increases at a constant rate of two minutes until it reaches a speed of 10 miles per hour. Then it increases his speed at a varied rate for one minute until it reaches a speed of 20 miles per hour. Finally, the horse decreases its speed at a constant rate for three minutes until it comes to a stop. Sketch a graph that accurately represent Julian's horse ride. So as you see, this is the beginning point, start from here. To this point, as you see, we have increase in constant rate. From this point to this point, we have increase in constant rate. Then we have here increase in varied rate or in change rate. Then as you see from this point to the end point, we have decreases in a constant rate, in a constant rate. So this is uh, our lesson today. Who has any question about this ideas? This is very easy lesson. Just we want to analyze the graph. Just we want to know where, which period increases or decreases or no change and increases in constant rate or in period rate. So who has any question about this lesson? No question, Mr. Uh, this is the last uh, lesson in Model 5. Inshallah, on the next Monday, we have a quiz in the Model 5. We have uh, six uh, uh, lessons. Inshallah, in the same period of uh, mathematics, we have uh, a small quiz uh, just uh, in Model 5. We have six lessons. I will send uh, to you a message in the WhatsApp group, Inshallah. Okay, let's us, let us to go to do some training about the MSAT exam. Mr. Can we, can you do some questions of the homework you sent yesterday? You have questions, yes? Uh, I have two questions. Uh, send, Mr. Me Mr. send me the pictures in the WhatsApp, please. Today we have homework, yes. Mr. Can you leave? Can you
Okay, the question here, determine whether each equation represents a linear or nonlinear function. Uh, explain, explain. Okay, Hello. Uh, always remember, if you can write the equation like y equal mx plus b, means you have linear equation, you have linear equation. If you have squared or you have cubed or you have any any exponent up one means the equation not linear. If you have you have square or cubed root. Means you have nonlinear. If you have fraction but the denominator will be a variable, means not linear. So in this case, thus just in this case, it means the equation not linear. If you can write the equation like this, means you have linear. So we have this equation. The first step, uh, like the equation, equal, equal or like y, y equal, y equal. So we can take 5 to the next side. So you can subtract 5 from the two sides, minus 5 here and minus 5 here. So here we have in this side 5 minus 5 would be 0. It means in this side y. And in the second side we have x over 4 minus 5. What's the meaning of x over 4? x over 4 means 1 over 4 times x. 1 over 4 times x. Then we have minus 5. As you see, this form like y equal mx plus b. So it means this equation linear. This equation will be linear. As you see, the slope here. 1 over 4, and the y intercept to be equal what? Negative 5. Is it okay, Muhammad? Yes, Mr. It's clear. Yes. This is the all questions? Um, Mr. I have only one question. Okay. We have this uh, example. I want to from all to read this example, then try please to find the answers. Uh, Muhammad, in the second uh, question here, you have x over y equal 8. Mr. Uh, yes? I was going to ask you بإمكانك تشوف التسجيل بعض القصة بعض القصة برسل التسجيل. أوكي. Okay. We have x over y equal 8. As you remember, the denominator of 8, 1. So you can do a cross product. 8 times y, 8y. Equal x times 1x. Then we want just y, so we can divide the two sides by 8. Divide here by 8 and divide here by 8. So 8y divided by 8 will be y equal 
x over 8 means 1 over 8 times x. And as you see, this equation like y equal mx plus b. But the b here, the value of b will be 0. So it means this is linear. This is linear. Okay, Muhammad? Okay, Mr. Mr. Could you go down to the uh, choices? Okay. In this question, the perimeter of the rectangle shown below is 10 and 4 over 10 meters. We have the perimeter. As you see, you see we have the length, we have the value of L. And the width missing value, W, represent W. And what is the width of the rectangular or, or, or of the rectangle in meters? We want to find the missing value of W. Type. Start from the rule of the perimeter. Who can remember us? What is the rule of the perimeter? Perimeter represent P equal. 2 times length plus 2 times width. Then substitute the known values. We have the perimeter here 10 and 4 over 10. 10 and 4 over 10 equal 2 times The value of L, as you see, 3 and 9 over 10. Plus 2W. And as you see, we have here equation. We want to solve this equation. 
to know the value of the variable. So I want to change from mixed number to the fraction. 10 times 10, 100. 100 plus 4 will be 104. Over 10. So 10 times 10 will be 100. Plus 4 will be 104 over 10. Equal 2 times. Change here to the fraction. 3 times 3 times 10 will be 30. 30 plus 9 will be 39 over 10. Plus 2W. Then we can multiply here by 2. So here we have 104 over 10 equal 2 times 39. Or we can do simplest form. We have 2 here up and 10 down. Uh, 2 divided by 2 will be 1 and 10 divided by 2 will be 5. So we'll be here 39 over 5. plus 2w. This side, the second side, include the variable. So try to remove the constant term. So you can take it to the next side. We have here in the first side 104 over 10. Take this constant to the next side and switch the sign will be negative 39 over 5. Equal to the bit. We can do here simplest form or we can here multiply by 2 to get the same denominator to do subtraction. If you want to do here uh, simplest form. You can divide up by 2 and divide down by 2. 104 divided by 2 will be 52. Over 5. Minus 39. Over 5. Equal to W. Then do this subtraction. Uh, 52 minus 39 will be 14 over 5. Uh, sorry, will be 13 over 5. Then here we have equal to W. We want to remove the 2 from here. We can divide the two sides by 2, or we can multiply the two sides by 1 over 2. We can multiply here by 1 over 2, and we can multiply here by 1 over 2. 1 times 13, 13, and 2 times 5 will be 10. Equal. Here, 2 times 1, 2, divide by 2 will be 1. Remains W. So the width, the width now equals 13 over, over 10. As a fraction, change it to the uh, mixed number. Uh, we can do long, long division. 13. And here, 10. 13 divided by 10 will be 1. 1 times, 13, 1 times 10, 10. 13 minus 10 will be 3. So the answer, take the quotient. This is the whole number. And the 3 over 10. So 
So it means the first choice, this is the correct choice. Who has any question about this idea? Mister, when you divided um, 2 to 10 and 39, why didn't you divide also 39? Which is Steve here or here? No, on the here on the left. On the left, we want to remove this two. We have uh, here two method. We can divide not, uh, on, uh, yeah. on the perimeter side. Ah, uh, here? Yeah. Yeah. Here, uh, I use the rule uh, perimeter equal two times length plus two times width. Then uh, I put the values. What is the value of B? 10 and 4 over 10. 10 and 4 over 10. Equal to times the value of L. What is the value of L? 3 and 9 over 10. 3 and 9 over 10. Plus 2 W. Then, a change from mixed number to the uh, fraction. 10 times 10 will be 100. 100 plus 4 will be 104. Over the same denominator, over 10. Equal. We have here 2. And here a change from the mixed number to the fraction. 3 times 10, 30 plus 9, 39 over 10. Hello, here, if you if you want, you can multiply 2 times 39, or you can do simplest form. We have 2 up and 10 down. We have so you two. can multiply or uh, do simplest form, right? Yes, you can do the, the two method. Hello, when you have this form like this, here you can multiply 2 by 39, then divide the answer by 10. Here we have 10, sorry. You can multiply 2 by 39. Then divide the answer by 10, like this. Uh, 2 times 8, uh, 9, 18. 2 times 3, 6 plus 1, 7. Will be 78 over 10. Or you can do simplest form. You have two up and ten down. You can, you can divide here by two, will be one, and you can divide here by two, will be five. It's up to you, okay? Thank you. Welcome. Who has any question? Five. Inshallah, on uh, the next Monday, we have a quiz in the model uh, five, six lessons. Six lessons, I will send to you a message about the information in the uh, WhatsApp group. So uh, I will send to you the PowerPoint of this lesson and the recording and the practice to do training. And if you have any question, you can ask me, inshallah, in the next lesson. So this is our lesson today. Thank you for your listening. Have a nice day. Have a nice weekend. See you, inshallah, in next Monday. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.